We're introducing Benjamin Giesen, publisher of Touch the Soil magazine, for your special events needs. Touch the Soil focuses on local food first, sustainable agriculture, responsible organics, and food security. His presentations are intended for the general public as well as those interested in food, farming, and economics. The presentations cover two general areas. First is the food and farming landscape. At home and abroad, the demand for food is outpacing production. There is also a decline in the ability of conventional food and its production practices to sustain human and broader ecological health. In spite of these challenges, solutions are emerging from the local and sustainable food movements where every person can make a difference. Much of our future depends on the work being done on the local food and farming landscape. The second is our archaic and ailing financial system. The financial system's inability to save the economy grows with each new wave of exclusions, be they homelessness, food and utility insecurity, home foreclosures, or mounting job insecurity. The financial industry is unable to find enough qualified borrowers to create and distribute the cash flows needed to maintain the economy. The message from the financial industry is that we can less and less afford ourselves the truth, however, is the exact opposite. Humanity can less afford the financial system. Other options abound. Ben comes from a 20-year banking career, culminating as a senior agricultural approval officer for one of the nation's top 10 agricultural banks. Upon leaving the banking industry, he consulted farmers and ranchers struggling to survive financially. He negotiated some of the largest debt settlements between farmers and their creditors. Author of Farmers and Ranchers Guide to Credit and hundreds of published articles, he is now the publisher of Touch the Soil magazine and lectures around the nation. Hello ladies and gentlemen. Rural and urban farming have become the stage for change. Change in our approach to food, the environment and economics. Millions of people, family farmers and innovative grocers, are joining forces to fix what's wrong with food and farming today. Many industrial food and farming practices have compromised ecological and human health. These losses are precariously chalked up as a cost of doing business. So is it any wonder health care costs have grown from 5.5% of the gross domestic product in 1960 to almost 17% of the gross domestic product in 2007. In fact, some economists now predict health care costs will grow to 25 to 35 percent of the gross domestic product by 2050. One must ask why food no longer sustains our health. Millions of people, family farmers, and organic retailers are becoming one voice in favor of foods not genetically modified, grass-fed meats, without antibiotics, hormones, or nitrates, grass-based milk produced without hormones, and fresh produce raised without the use of toxic chemicals, and the preservation of the nation's farmland, water, and food producing talent. Today, the National Farmers Market Movement, as an unofficial franchise that has over 4,500 market locations, is much larger than Walmart with only 3,700 locations in America and the number of farmers markets is growing by about 10 percent per year. There's also an explosion in other ways in which consumers and farmers are hooking up directly, such as in CSAs where a family receives a fresh box of produce each week from a local farm, new food cooperatives that link local farmers and local eaters, and the move by the nation's organic stores to feature products from local and regional farmers. An influential and vocal new agricultural system has emerged. In contrast, is the nation's industrial food movement, striving to serve inexpensive, highly processed convenience foods loaded with hormones, antibiotics, genetically modified ingredients, and chemicals to families with limited financial and or time budgets. So today we have two food and farming systems, and the chasm between the two continues to grow. It is critical that the bridges and friendly communications be maintained so that unsustainable and unhealthy food and farming models can cross the chasm to sustainability and healthfulness. On another note, the nation's competitive financial landscape, which materially directs the activities of the physical economy, 
maintains a vision of continued growth in every aspect of human activity, a vision which requires the loss of farmland, water, and food-producing talent to feed broader economic growth. The nation's competitive financial landscape has us doing with our hands and minds what is often recognized in our hearts as a path with no future, the unsustainable loss of the world's farming assets. Today, America farms 275 million acres less than it did in 1954, the peak farmland year. This agricultural decline is contributing to a global food situation in which demands for food are outpacing agriculture's capacity to produce food. On a per capita basis, America now farms only 27% of the land it did in 1900. And other nations are on a similar treadmill, exploiting agricultural assets to facilitate economic growth. While I wish there were another way to say it, our archaic financial structure is directing the larger economy towards a head-on collision with the sustainability of food and farming. On another front, we are now part of a global marketplace. The largest portion of America's agricultural production moves into channels that can be tapped for exports to nations far less food secure. This means Americans must compete with giants such as China and India and dozens of food insecure nations for who gets to eat what comes off of American farms. In one of the most explosive food dramas ever to unfold in America is the recent exportation of wheat far in excess of production, requiring a drawdown of domestic wheat stocks to 60-year lows. This has a, the American baking industry competing for a pool of wheat so small that advances in prices for baking ingredients threaten the industry's financial picture and create concern over spot shortages. Unfortunately, the challenges of America's baking industry are minor compared to the global wheat and flour shortages, causing demonstrations, political instability, and black markets for wheat and flour around the globe. Ethanol production is now materially competing for the same agricultural resources as food. Skyrocketing feed costs as feed crops and corn for ethanol compete for a limited crop acres has the meat, poultry, and dairy industries demanding that the government rethink its position in subsidizing ethanol. Concurrently, the world's cereal grain farmers, which raise wheat, barley, rice, and corn, have raised enough grains to meet consumption only one year out of the last eight. So for most, it comes as a shock that we have not been eating totally off of current production, but a portion of our diets has been from a drawdown of food stocks built up by farmers of almost a generation ago. And so we come full circle to understand that the solutions, activities and models emerging in the local and sustainable food movement are the lifeboats now docking alongside our major metropolitan areas. Knowledge of the world's tentative food and farming situation is something every child, family and community organization should be conversant on. For in many respects, food is something that people can take action on. They can change how they spend their food dollars. They can establish direct relationships with farmers. They can build personal or community food stocks. And they can participate in the emerging urban agriculture megatrend. It will be common people, their sustainable farmers and innovative retailers, that will provide the solutions to this tentative food situation. To bring about an awareness of the food and farming landscape, and the people and ideas that are moving towards solutions is the focus of Touch the Soil magazine and our related presentations. For those interested in how the financial industry influences the course of events in food, farming, and the economy, presentations on our archaic and ailing financial systems are a must. Presentations that include the knowledge of how mechanisms of exchange, inaccurately called money, are created, destroyed, and distributed have been received with stunning success and audience interest. I invite you to contact Touch the Soil to schedule a custom presentation that supports your organization's visions and work around these and other related topics. Visit our website at www.touchthesoil.com or call us at 208-523-2717. Thank you.